Working with God is not, it's not an option for the born again believer in Christ. Working with God is not an option. But it is a must if we want to enjoy the higher glories God has this time for us on this earth and the world to come. Working with God. It's not an option for the born and again believer in Christ. It's a must. Every one of us, God expects us to come to that place where we will walk with him. Every one of us. It's a must that we ought to walk with God if we want to experience the glories he had designed for us in Christ. It's a must that we must learn to walk with him if we want to even have eternity with him. The Bible says in Genesis 5.24 that Enoch walked with God and he was not found for God took him. Genesis 5.24 that Enoch walked with God and was not found for God took him. And Bible says everything that has been written for time or before this dispensation of grace is for our admonition, is for us to learn from, is for us to take a cue from. So even in those days, if Enoch could walk with God, he didn't have the full import of scriptures, but he learned how to work with God, then we can do better. In this position of grace. Because we have the completeness of the word of God. Endoch walked with God and was not found. And Bible says, for God took him. This means that Enoch always did that which was pleasing in the sight of God. It also means that Enoch continuously walked in accordance to God's word. To the extent that God saw it necessary to take him to a glorious destination beyond this earthly realm. For the Bible says, for God took him and Enoch was not found. The Bible also in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the verse 5, says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. No one found him. They don't know what happened to him. The Bible says, for God has translated him. And he said, for before this translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Hallelujah. Amen. He had this testimony that he pleased God. So God took him. This should tell us that one can only walk with God when we agree with him. We can only walk with God when we agree with him in his word. Because without you submitting or yielding to God's word, you cannot be well matched or you cannot be well minded or like minded with Him in every way. And God wants each and every one of us, because we are, of, we are born of Him and we are His offspring, He wants every one of us to be well matched. And He wants you to be like minded with Him in every way. And God also wants every one of His creation. To be well matched. That's why his arms are wide open. Beckoning people to come into the kingdom. He wants every one of his creation to be well matched. And to be like minded with him. So he can always deal with us without any difficulty. If we are well matched and like minded with God. It will be easier for God to deal with us. On this earth. Before we go into eternity. Because there are many things that God has EMF for our life in Christ on this earth. Such glories that the human mind cannot comprehend. Those things we are experiencing are just the tip of the iceberg. Everything we are enjoying are just the tip of the iceberg. If God should open our eyes for us to behold the eternal glory that he has EMF for your life and for my life in Christ, it will blow your mind. That's why Paul, so Paul, uh, Paul said, for God shall supply all your needs according to his glories. His riches in glory by Christ. So not your riches, his riches. And no one can quantify the riches of God. No one can quantify the riches of God. 
not the depth of it, not the height of it, not the amount of it, the quantity of it. None of us can quantify a blessing that God has yema for us in Christ. That's why he wants us to be well matched with him. That's why he wants us to be like-minded with him through his word so he can deal with us without any difficulty. Because when we don't align ourselves to his ways, it makes it difficult because he's a God of principles. It doesn't violate them. It makes it difficult to drive the course of our life in Christ. God has given us the Holy Spirit for the purpose that he can drive the course of our life. And when we don't become well like-minded with him, we don't think the way he wants us to think. We don't agree with him. With regards to what he has documented his word, it will be very difficult for him to deal with us as the way, as, as the way he wants to deal with us. You saw how he just took Enoch away. No one is supposed to go to where Enoch was with their physical body. That's why Enoch had to come back and die. So only two people on this earth had gone out of this earth without dying physically. And that is Enoch and Elijah. And they are the two, they are the two witnesses, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, that will come during the time of the great tribulation and they'll be killed. And people will rejoice. And then the third day, they will not be buried. A voice will come from heaven and call them up. If they could walk with God to that extent that God took them, we can do the same. Why am I saying so? In Enoch's time and Elijah's time, they had just a manufaction of the spirit of God and the glory of God upon their life. They didn't have the Holy Spirit residing in them perpetually or permanently. That's why in the Old Testament you hear that the Spirit of God came upon. But with regards to our life in Christ now, the Spirit of God is indwelling us. Totally. His totality, not with part of him. His fullness. The same measure he came to indwell Jesus Christ, he dwells in you and me in the same measure. Then you will ask them, why are we not able to perform the task we ought to perform? It's because you have not given yourself to training. And it's because you don't even know that the totality of the Holy Spirit is in you. You know the Holy Spirit is you, but you don't actually, you've not been able to comprehend the dimension to which the Holy Spirit can explore in your life. You've not come to understand that. So we have a better standing now than the times of the Old Testament because we have the Holy Spirit 24-7 residing in us. And he's there for us to commune with him. How many of us are communing with the Holy Spirit? When we agree with God in our work, not only are we demonstrating our willingness to please him, but we are also expressing his nature in us outwardly. And I repeat again, I say when we agree with God in our work through his word, not only are we demonstrating our willingness to please him, but we are also expressing his nature in us outwardly. Because God is a God of orderliness and a God, of, and a God who upholds certain standards and moral values and also certain integrity of principles in life. God has principles that you pray by. He has opposed certain moral values. And he wants us to come to agree with him. Because he created you, he created me. And he know what those values can bring us to. And he has given us examples. Enoch did work with God. He walked by those standards and moral, moral values that God wanted him to. And God took him. God said, you are not fit to be with the people on this earth. You've gone far beyond. So I'm taking you from here. But I'll bring you back again. Bible says, for Enoch was not found because God took him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We ought to know by now that it is true, the word of God, that he, God, can communicate to us his will, 
is through his word that he can communicate to you and me his mind. It's through his word that God can communicate to us his ways. It's through the word of God that he, God can communicate to us his purposes. It's same, the same through the word of God that God can communicate to you and me his plans. God has got plans. That's why it says, my plans for you are not plans of evil, are not plans of evil, but plans of good to bring you to an expected end. So God has given you and me his word so that through the word he can communicate to us his will, he can communicate to us his mind, he can communicate to us his ways, he can communicate to us his purposes and his plans. So when we understand this, it helps us unite or gets us close, our closer work or intimacy with him. When we understand the mind of God, when we come to comprehend the ways of God, his purposes and plans for our lives in Christ, it helps us unite with him. It helps us get, our, get closer to him. It helps us to have great intimacy with him. This is why the Bible says, how can two work together except they agree? In the book of Amos 3.3, Amos 3.3, I like what the Bible in basic English rendered this, book, this part of Amos 3.3. It said, is it possible for two good to go working together if not by agreement? That's Bible in basic English. King James says, "For how can two work together except they agree? Amos 3.3 in Bible in basic English says, is it possible for two to go working together if not by agreement? So when one agrees with God 100% through his word, your fellowship with him becomes more meaningful and enjoyable. Why we don't enjoy the fellowship? Why some of us cannot even complain the fellowship that we have with God? And when they tell, look, you can walk with God to such an extent that, look, you begin to understand his ways. You need to come to understand this. God wants close intimacy with every one of his children. Not even with everyone, with all his creation, he wants close intimacy. That's why when man failed, God still made another plan to rescue man or reconcile man to himself. God always wants intimacy, close ones with him. This is the reason why he created Adam and Eve, and this is also one of the reasons for reconciling us to himself when man failed through our faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross. And this close intimacy with God is based on how we gain knowledge of him through his written manual called the Bible. We can only have the understanding as to how to work with God or have close intimacy with him when we give ourselves diligence search in his word. Because there is where, like I said, you know his ways, you know his purpose, you know his plan. You know his mind. So the more one is closely related with the word, having understanding of the same and walking by the word, the more your relationship and fellowship with the Lord gets improved. Anytime you get close related to the word of God and you kind of upgrade yourself in complete understanding, getting greater life from the word of God. When you gain more knowledge in the word of God, your relationship, your fellowship, your intimacy with the Lord gets improved. That's what the Bible says. Say peace will be multiplied to you through the knowledge of our Lord, our Lord Jesus and our God. He said grace and peace can be multiplied to us. You see, the more the grace of God, the more the glory of God that gets rubbed off on our life. So he said grace and peace can be multiplied in our lives through the knowledge of Jesus and the knowledge of our God, God our Father. So God wants our fellowship with him, our work with him to be improved at the days, as the months, as the year goes by. 
If you knew God at a certain level last year and you still know him at the same level this year, it's an unfortunate situation. If you knew God at a certain level last year, this year your knowledge about God should go higher than you knew him. Because look, you see, the love of God is so deep that no one can comprehend. It's so wide. Because the more you know God, the more you want to have that fellowship. Unfortunately, some Christians at the beginning of their new birth in Christ were what the word I will use, or Joshua's, very fervent in spirit for the Lord, very joyful, always want to have something to do with the Lord. Spiritual matters become their contemplation. But as the days, the man, the year rolls by, our love for the things of the spirit wins down. Why? It's because of what? Our detaching ourselves gradually from the knowledge of God's word. Anytime you get off from scripture for a longer time, I'm telling you, your intimacy with the Lord gets ruined. If you go to the Old Testament, many are times when you see the Israelites taken to captivity, it was because the priests had stopped teaching the word and it's because the people were not doing the right thing so the priests had to go farming. And so the word of God was not taught and they closed the temple. And God will warn them severally, wanting them to repent. They will not. Then you take them to captivity. You go read and see. All the times that Israel were taken to captivity was when the word was absent. Because the word of God does something with our spirit. And it does something with our soul. The word of God does something. Like you listen right now. Something is going through, especially when I say you listen, I'm talking about listening keenly and picking up certain phrases from what I'm saying. It does many things in your spirit and your soul. That which you cannot know now till as the day goes by and time goes, you begin to see those things working in your life. There are certain, certain things that I do now that I begin to wonder, how, where did I know the know-how? What come, what happened? And I can't tell. Only for me to come to have an inspiration. Oh, really? This is an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Just yeah, because I want to know more about God. I want to understand his ways, his purposes. I want to know his mind. That's the only way that can give you that mandate of that closeness with him. We need to learn to walk with God. Praise the Lord. When we 100% agree with God through his word, then the, the rest, we get rest assured that our closeness and intimacy with him is on a right and a solid foundation. For your intimacy with God to be on the right and solid foundation, you need to 100% agree with God in his word. You know, some people say, you know, uh, I read this, you know, but, uh, you know, I don't agree. <laughs> You don't agree, that's your problem. He's your creator. He's saying this. You say you don't agree. How can the, how do you call it, uh, a product tell the manufacturer, I don't agree with you. It's never happened. That's why God gave Jeremiah an instance and said, how can the clay tell the potter how the potter should mold it? He said the clay doesn't have that right. God was telling the nation of Israel, you want to tell me what I should do? He said, you don't have that right. That's why he used Jeremiah, he used Jeremiah to display with the pot. He said, how can the clay tell the potter what he ought to do? And that's what many of us are doing in life. We don't say it, our actions depicts it. And sometimes subtly our words depicts it. We want to tell God what he should do. If we 100% agree with God through his word, then we are rest assured that our close, our intimacy with him is on the right and solid foundation because this is the foundation that opens our spirit to hear from him always. Most of us will say we want to hear from God, we want to hear from God. There's a foundation that ought to be laid. There's a foundation that ought to be laid. And I mean, when we allow his word to govern our way on life on this earth, that's the foundation we can lay. Allow his word to govern us. Allow his word to dominate us. The word of God should rule us. When I say the word of God should govern us, I mean that we walk in the dictates of the word. As James said, 
do not be hearers of the word alone. He said, deceiving yourself, but be ye doers. So he said, we don't only hear the word, but we do our best to act upon the word. I said, was it on Wednesday? I gave a certificate as I said, or oh, is it Sunday or Wednesday? I said, why some of us cannot get the glories of God away? Because we can't prove God. Small headache. Yes, medicine is there to be taken. But then there's a better option, I believe, through scriptures. Because the Bible says the word of God is medicine to all I have, our flesh. So I said, once in a while, either your baby or yourself, when you have headache or some pain, why don't you say, you know, today I'm not going to take medicine. I'm going to prove God. And say, Father, thank you. That your waist is on the cross. You slay your first begotten son, Jesus Christ, for my sake. And he was bruised for my sake. And the chastisement of his peace, of my peace was laid upon him. And so by his stripe, I am healed. Therefore, I receive virtue right now, flowing into me. Let's anoint the healing anointing. Let it touch me right now. I command this headache to go in the name of Jesus. Because he said, you will decree a thing also, and it shall be as what established on you. That means you will also decide the matter. So when you now ask God to do something, you now agree with him by making decrees. I command these pains to live right now. Try it and see. And you know, because God wants to have that intimacy, he wants to have that walk with you. When we do that earnestly, he answers us. Because he knows there are bigger challenges that will come ahead that will cause your faith to, to win. So he begins to help you build your faith in him with little, 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 little things proving God. Let's start somewhere putting the word of God into practice. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The foundation that opens our spirit to hear from God is to allow his word to govern our life on earth. Look at what Jesus said in the book of John, the chapter 10, the verses 27 to 28. He said, my sheep hear my voice. John chapter 10, the verses 27 to 28. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. He said, my sheep hear my voice. <laughs> Why is God saying my sheep hear my voice? Because any sheep that stands in line and goes ahead with a shepherd. And I've lived with a shepherd for a long time. is able to hear the master's voice. Any other voice you do not hear. Sometimes I get amazed when I read scriptures and I see the practicality of it, working it with people who are not with, in the faith. Once I watch a Fulani man, anytime you get the Fulani people driving whatever they call the cows or cattle, you look at the way they do. They make certain signs. <laughs> and, and, and the cattle follow in line. And I get amazed. One day I watch one of them. And you know, and and, and the cattle, they all came together like this and started moving. I watched. If I do the same sign, they won't mind me. Because my tongue will be different. My smell is different. My face is different. So Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So Jesus is anticipating that every one of us will learn how to walk closely with him. So that we can hear from him. The basis of our intimacy is that we can hear from God. We could avert many misfortunes in our life if we could hear from God. You know, most of us have come to believe we think hearing from God say, Oh, Kojo, Kwame, Joseph, hear me. No. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in us and he gives us little intuitions. When you train yourself, you come to know it. That's why when I take a step and I want to do something else, no matter what you do, I'll do it because I know what I'm doing. I know what I've heard. You didn't hear. I know what I've heard. Apart from sometimes the dreams and vision I have, but primarily, I have intuitions in my spirit with regards to something. So anytime, anytime, 
we walk with God through the knowledge of his word. He in turn will have that communication with us. Most of us want to hear from God. But we need to learn how to walk with him. Otherwise, we can't hear from him. So he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. Are you following? Are you a disciple? Are you following Christ or you are following men? They say, and they follow me. They follow Christ. Not following the pastor. No, but they follow Christ. They make his word the ultimate in their lives. Hallelujah. Our agreement with God through his word and the privilege we enjoy with regards to the ongoing fellowship with him is what gives us access to also hear him speak to us clearly in our daily walk with him. God wants every one of his beloved ones to hear from him directly. God wants you to hear from him directly. He wants you. Go through the Bible. Jesus has been giving you. God wants you to hear from him directly. He wants me to hear from him directly. And not until we understand this, it will be difficult to maintain that close intimacy he wants us to have with him always. Not till we come to understand that, look, God wants me to hear from him directly. We need to understand that. He wants you to hear from him directly. Because it is God's heartbeat that he communicates personally with everyone that he has called. Are you called of the Lord? Then he wants to communicate with you. He desires to have a personal rapport with everyone of his beloved. God wants to have a good rapport with you. But we have made it so difficult for him to do so because we don't want to give attention to his word and are not ready for this godly rapport with him. Those times I begin to learn how to get to know how to hear the voice of God. I've heard the voice of the Holy Spirit loudly many times. The first time I heard it, I... I, 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 I was sleeping. I slept late and I prayed. I didn't know much as I knew now. And I said, Lord, I pray that you wake me up. At 3 a.m., I want to study some word. There was something, Charlie, I want to. I want to study your word and I want to have some tete-a-tete -tete with you in prayer. Brothers and sisters. I was sleeping. I slept around one something. Exactly five minutes to three. I heard the voice by my window. Jose. So loud and clear. I was sleeping. Jose. Jose. So I, oh, I woke up. And I expected to hear a voice. I didn't hear any voice again. I went back to sleep again. Within just five hours, those of because I was tired. Jose. Jose. I woke up. This time around, I sat down. Then I heard a still gentle voice. You told me to wake you up. I just got up and took the Bible and sat. I always make sure that I have a sofa in my bedroom. And I want big bedrooms. So I can always be there to do what I want to do. So I put the Bible and began studying. I came to a place and I saw some word. I was passing. I was inspired to go back to the word. And I looked at that word. The word caught my attention. For the whole week, that word caught my attention. I tell brothers and sisters, it didn't take two weeks. That word that caught my attention, the glories of the word came. God wanted to open up to something. He wanted to bless me in some damage. I didn't understand. And that blessing was beyond my human comprehension. So when I read it, I said, wow. This, and I was thinking, oh, maybe some years. Or maybe it took only two weeks. And do you know why? God was doing so to cut my attention. To woo me so that I'll take that time to always want to. Be close to him. Another time I was praying, I was fasting for three days, four days, uh, three days, four days without breaking throughout. No water, nothing. And I was, didn't come out even for the three days. And the last day, the fourth day, I, I, I just got on my knees and I was praying and I heard behind me. I love you. I said, what? I looked back. Nobody was there. Then he said again, I love you. So now I remember the priest telling Samuel that when you hear, say, Lord speaks. I said, I didn't turn again. I said, Lord, I, I know. He said, no. 
my good and my hard lips. I didn't answer. I looked back again, nobody was there. So what I did was just to look through scriptures and I took some to get me some book to really comprehend what the love of God means. And it took me six months. I had all the book, read the Bible, and I came and understood. And I had time again, I fasted and prayed before him. The next time I heard again, I said, yes, Lord, I know. He didn't say anything again. That was when God was setting me for ministry. Then I heard certain things in my spirit. I've written everything down. And today all those things are working. Look, God wants to deal with us individually. Because you have a place in God. I have a place in God. You might not be a minister of the gospel. You might not be a prophet. You might not be that. But there's a place you are at your workplace. God wants to use you. Every one of us. If not so, why has he given birth to us by the Holy Spirit? He wants his glory to shine upon our lives so that to become an attractive force to woo many into the kingdom. All throughout from the beginning of creation, we found out that when God created Adam and Eve and he put them in the garden, there was a great communication between them. Till one day, even when he came and Adam and Eve had sinned, and God knew they had sinned, but he still was coming for what? <laughs> that rapport. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And God said, what are you? He said, we were naked and we hid ourselves. And God said, who told you so? Even in the midst of their fault, God was still desiring to come to talk to them, to have communication with them. Can you imagine that? The loving kindness of God. You see, there are many things that is ahead of our pathways in life. That God wants to get us to know them so that we can avoid them. Or when we go to that place, we are able to withstand them. We are able to conquer them. We are able to overcome them. So he wants us to know ahead of time. That's why he wants that closer walk with him. So we can always hear from him. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, when God even took Moses as a deliverer and made him head of the nation of Israel, we will notice that at one point in time, he chose to have a close contact with the entire nation. Although he was speaking through Moses alone and all the time they were coming, none of them had any contact with God. It was Moses and then they would tell Moses to go and tell them all the time. But one time, God wanted to have contact with every one of them. So if you go to Exodus chapter 19, the whole book of Exodus chapter 19, but I want to take the verse 10 and 12 and the verse 16 to 24 and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. <laughs> God was through most of this time he said he wants to have all of them, have contact with every one of them. I want you to understand that look, no matter how weak, no matter how we think, God is far away from us. He wants to have a close work with you so he can communicate with you. And verse 12 says, And thou, and thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourself that ye go not up into the mountain or touch the border of it. Whosoever touch up the mountain shall surely be put to death. He said, I'm coming on Mount Sinai. I don't want anyone to say, Put boundary. No one should touch. Not even an animal should touch. Because my presence will descend on my mountain. On Mount Sinai. And verse 16, and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. So all the people that was in the camp trembled. They trembled at the sight, the presence of God. And Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke. He just sent the angel of his presence. Who came in a form of thunder and with smoke and fire. God doesn't leave his throne. He said, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. furnace. And the whole mount quacked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake and God answered him by the voice. And the Lord came down from Mount, and, and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. 
on the top of the mountain. The Lord called Moses up to the top of the mountain and Moses went up. So God called him up. He descended with fire and smoke and like fire burning. And he called Moses to come up there, but the rest, he left them there. But they heard the voice of the Lord. And verse 21, and the Lord said unto Moses, go down, charge the people, lest they break through the, unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. You know, he said, go and tell them that they want to peep up and see. They, will come, they want to come and peep and see how the fire and what is in the fire. He said, oh, lest they will perish. He said, so go and tell them. No one should even dare want to peep to see what is going on. And Moses, and the priest also, and he said, yeah, and, the, and let the priest, verse 22, also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, let the Lord break forth upon them. Let them set themselves apart. And Moses said unto the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for that charges them, saying, set bounds about the mount and sanctify. I, I wonder whether God forgot that he said they should send bound, <laughs> but he said he should go and tell them. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto him, Okay, away, get thee down. Verse 24, And thou shalt come up, and thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So we see that in these two accounts, in the book of Genesis and the book of Exodus, God will respect, God will respect with the fact that when he walks with you, he expects that he also Communicate with you. Praise the Lord. He's ever ready to initiate a strong communication. God is ever ready to initiate a very strong communication with us to help us stay focused in life. That's all his purpose, to help you and me stay focused in life. He wants to initiate a strong communication with you. Either through our inner intuition, other true visions and dreams or whatever it is. He wants to, but primarily through our intuitions in your spirit. Because that's where the Holy Spirit dwells in. God wants to communicate with us individually. This is why in this position of grace, he's given us the Holy Spirit to reside in us. These are the last days. So please let us learn to walk by the word. By wholly committing ourselves to do diligence study. That's the way we can learn to walk with God. In this last day, many Christians have become very slothful and lazy when it comes to studying the, the word of God. Many, many. They only want to see signs and wonders before they believe that God is there. Without signs and wonders, God is there. God was even there before signs and wonders came. He's always been there. As a matter of fact, signs and wonders is, is to prove that, yes, his power is also works. But he's always been there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us learn to walk by the word, by wholly committing ourselves to do diligence daily. So we can have a good and a wonderful ongoing fellowship with God as we hear him speak to us, giving our fellowship with him a solid ground to blossom. God wants to help you at the where you are working. He wants to help you at your trade. He wants to help you with your profession. He wants to help you with your ministry. God wants to help each and every one of us. But until we learn to work with him, then we will also become, be able to hear his voice. They'll be able to take instructions to do what he wants us to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As much as our knowledge of the word strengthens our fellowship and communication with God, it is also through our complete knowledge of God's word that establishes our relationship and fellowship with the name of Jesus. You know, most of us have come to in the name of Jesus. And we love to use the name of Jesus. But the name of Jesus is not working for many of us when we use it in prayer because we have not taken time to have fellowship or relationship with that name. The name of Jesus was not given to us as a punctuation mark as some of us, some of us do in prayer. Neither was it given to us as a formula or method during prayer. But there's something behind the name that we ought to grasp through revelation knowledge. For instance, if we come to understand from scriptures what is at the back of the name? And you can only find from scriptures. What's at the back of the name of Jesus? You need to know that. What's at the back of the name? And you need to also know what does the name of Jesus carries? What does it carry? And what can the name do in any given situation for you or for something? For somebody? 
When we come to understand this, I'm telling you the name of Jesus will work. What's at the back of the name? We need to understand. Because that's the name that God has given to us. It's a name above every name. And Bible says the name of the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. But we mention it doesn't work. So when we come to understand what is at the back of the name, what the name carries and what the name can do in any given way, then and then we will see the name working wonders the way it ought to work. The name of Jesus is the most strong and powerful name in heaven on earth and under the earth. The most strong and powerful name. If you go to Philippians chapter 2, the verses 9 to 10, the Bible says, Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, things in heaven, things in earth, and things under earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. So all the forces both in heaven and on this earth and under the earth responds to the name of Jesus. Every force, anytime the name is used with deep conviction. You see, when you understand what the name carries, when you understand what the name is able to do, when you understand what is at the back of the name, anytime you are using the name Jesus, you do so with great conviction. You do so with great conviction. And you do so with understanding. Praise the Lord. Jesus in the Bible is referred to as wonderful counselor. If you want to know some of the things the name carries, you say wonderful counselor, I'll just give you one. And also as signs and wonders, I just give us two scriptures. Look at what the name carries. Look at what is said of the name. Verse, uh, Isaiah chapter 9, the verse 6. It says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. So that means a son is raised. A child is born. That means we train ourselves to become mature. But we are born as babes. So you see, unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called what? Wonderful. Comma, counselor. Comma, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And the word wonderful here means miracle or <laughs> marvelous. So this should tell us that the name of Jesus is associated with miracles and marvelous or spectacular acts. So we understand, when we understand this through our fellowship with God in his word, the name of Jesus will work. The name of Jesus is also associated with signs and wonders. So if you go to the book of Isaiah 8, 18, he said, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given to me. He's not talking about you per se as a child of God. He was then referring to Jesus. So he said, I and the children, that means we who are believers in Christ that have been given to Jesus. He said, we are for wonders, signs and wonders. Those times, the Lord was living in the times in the place of Israel. So he said, in Israel, from the Lord of hosts who dwelleth on Mount Zion. So Jesus was given to us for signs and wonders. So why is it good for one to walk with the Lord and be united with him through the acknowledging of his word? Because the Bible gives us an expounded and accurate picture of the end of those that will seek to walk with God now on this planet earth. I'm saying, why is it good for one to walk with the Lord and be united with him to the acknowledging of his word? The Bible gives us an expounded and accurate picture of the end of those that will not want to walk with the Lord on this planet, but will seek to walk in their own ways. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, the verses 28 to 31, and this is a word of caution so that we know that, look, there's all possibilities that we can, there's the need that we need to walk with God. We can't do without that. Because when we don't learn to walk with him now, look at what happened. And we walk in our own ways. Look at the, the end result. In Isaiah chapter 1, the verses 28 to 31. Look at end results. The end result of anyone that refused to walk with the Lord. He said, but the common destruction will overtake sinners and evildoers together. You see, he mentioned what? Sinners and what? Evil doers. And those who have gone away from the Lord will be cut off. Do you understand that? 
Say, by the common distraction, that means the thing that will come both on evil doers and sinners together. And those who have, came, have gone away from the Lord, those who have decided not to walk with the Lord and they are walking in their own way. Verse 20, I said, for you will be put to shame because of the trees of your desire. So if you walk in your own ways, having your own desire, I said, you'll be put to shame. And because of the gardens of your pleasure, for you will be taken like a tree whose leaves have become dry. It's a big saying. So if you choose not to, if you decide not to work with God, he said, these are some of the things that you'll be having. And people are experiencing this even now. He said, you'll be put to shame. Many Christians have found themselves being shame, in shame because they've chosen not to work with God. He said, for you'll be put to shame because of the trees of your desire, because of your desires that are not in line with the word of God and because of the guidance of your pleasure. For you will be like a tree whose leaves have become dry and like a garden without water. And we understand when gardens have no water. When you don't water the garden, you don't expect to get any harvest. The, you only experience dryness because the root will be dry and to positively affect the what? The leaves. And also it will affect what? Its production of fruits. See, and the strong will be as food. You see, the strong will be as food for fire. And his work as flame. And they will be burned together and with no one to put out the fire. That means when challenges trigger on, you can't put it off. It will go on and on and on. If you choose not to work with the Lord, there are certain challenges that will come into your life. There's that you can do. It will be like wildfire. It will eat you up. You say, oh, but you know we are in Christ. Great. As much as God is a God of love, he's a God of judgment. Having to read from the Bible, he said when God took Israel from captivity, he said not all of them, although they went through a pillar of cloud by day and by a pillar of fire by, by night, he said, but not all of them entered Canaan land because of their unbelief. And unbelief will make you walk in disobedience. It will make you walk in contrast with the word of God. Unbelief. And now listen carefully also. Look closely at the picture of those who chooses to walk with the Lord in accordance to his word. And are ready to always yield to the move of his spirit. In Isaiah 58 verse 11. In turn, he was talking about fasting. He said, and the Lord shall guide you. Because if you see somebody wanting to fast to seek the face of the Lord, that means the fellow is desiring to be what? Close to the Lord. He said, days that wait upon the Lord shall be what? Shall renew their strength. They, might, they will mount wings like an eagle. So Isaiah 58 verse 11, the, the whole chapter of Isaiah 58 is talking about fasting. So when he came to verse 11, he said, the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy your soul in drought and make fat your bones that thou shalt be like a watered garden. You see the same, he's talking about garden now. Watered garden. And like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Jeremiah 31, 12 to 14 also paints a picture of those that walk with the Lord. In the Bible, in basic English, it says, so they will come with songs on the high places. Jeremiah 31, 12 to 14. So they will come with songs on the high places, flowing together to the to good things of the Lord. Flowing together to the good things of the Lord. They will come, so they will come with songs on the high places, flowing together to the good things of the Lord, to the grain and to the wine and the oil to the grain and to the wine and to the oil, to the young ones of the flock and of the head. Their souls will be like what? A watered garden and they will have no more sorrow. That means there will be daily refreshment from the Holy Spirit in your life. That's part of what you go through. He said, then the virgin will have joy, the verse 13, in the dance and the young men and the old will be glad for I will have their weeping turned into joy. And I will give them comfort and make them glad after their sorrow. And I will give the priests their desired fat things. And my people will have a full measure of my good things, says the Lord. Amen. This is the same thing that Jeremiah said that you shall seek for me and you shall find me when you seek for me with all your heart. And then I'll be found of you and I'll turn your captivity. It's the same thing. Anytime we seek God, he said, no matter what captivity we find ourselves, he said, God said, he will turn away the captivity. The same thing. Every time we walk with God, it turns around our captivity. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So are they also benefit? He said, this should tell us that as much as there are disastrous endings for those who choose not to work with God, so are they also benefits. Just as there are disastrous endings for anyone who chooses not to work with God, there are also benefits to those who made up our minds and are convinced that working with God on this step is the best option for man. Since the day of God's judgment is drawing closer in every second, working with God is the best option for man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because there are many prophets associated with our work with the Lord. Most especially when we allow God's engrafted word on the tablets of our, our soul. You know, sometimes we find ourselves say, oh, you know something, I've made it. <laughs> and I tell people, you have not made it, nothing. You think you have made it. It's just a tip of the iceberg with, with regards to what God wants to you to go or the extent to which God wants to kind of announce you or to the extent of which God wants to rub off his glory on you. You have not seen anything yet. That means if you were to know how to work with the Lord, you'll be much, much better of hundred times, better, thousand times better of than what you think you have. There are many prophets associated with our work with the Lord, most especially when we allow God's word engrafted on tablets of our soul. And I like this prophet. I like what the Bible says. The psalmist said, we shall hear a voice behind that on us saying, walk in this way when you are going the wrong way. It takes somebody who is working with the Lord. Is that not it? Yes. Otherwise, you can't hear his voice. He said, you shall hear a voice behind you saying, go this way. When you are going the wrong way. We always say the Holy Spirit is there to guide us. But we receive guidance? No. So why are we not receiving guidance? It's because we have not taken time to sit by his word. Anyone that sits down and wants to know Lord, the God in an intimate way, God will reveal himself to you. Anyone, he will do. He does. He does. Nobody is special. Everyone is special before God. If you go to James chapter 1, verse 20, where it says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of nothingness, and receive with bigness and grafted word, which is able to save your souls. So the word is important because your soul is the place where the walls of the world go through. Are we, do you know that? That's a battleground for the devil, your soul, your mind. Because your soul is comprised of your mind, your will, your emotion. Battleground is your mind. If the devil is able to gain your mind, you are finished. He can't get you as born again believer spirit. The devil cannot go there to do anything. By your soul, your mind, your will. He tempers with your will. He tempers with your emotions. And Bible is saying it is only the word of God that can be able to when you get it engrafted and boss on your, the tablet of your soul, it, say, it saves the soul. It brings deliverance from the soul. So the enemy will not have that mandate to always come and spew garbage in your soul as it does to many. You see, emotions like fear have killed many people. Uh, uh, look, most of the accidents that happen, majority of people that die from the accident, it's not because of the accident, it's because of fear. And fear is one of the emotions in the soul. So we find out in the Bible, it talks self several. Anytime an angel appears, says, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. But many of us are living in fear. Many Christians are living in fear. As we sit now, some of us are afraid about what tomorrow holds on for us. As we sit down. As what we eat tomorrow. Meanwhile, right down in the Bible, Jesus himself said, do not think about what you eat tomorrow. Say, for if God can feed the lilies of the valley, that does not say you shouldn't plan. But he said, don't worry. That word thing, he said, don't worry about what you, let don't worry or anxiety overtake you. Because those are the tools and weapons the enemy can use in your soul. Brings worry, anxiety. We get worried about, sometimes situation will come and you think that's the end of your world. And you sit down, you find at the moment, you have been scared and you have been trembling and at the end of it all, nothing has happened. Have you noticed that? I mean, nothing has happened. God is a God of love. So nothing happened and God wants you to take a cue from that. The thing that came to you, 
It couldn't kill you. So why do you think this one that's coming can kill you? Are you getting it? We can get these inspirations from God's word. Some of us have given up because we think nobody can help us. Then you hear Christians say, I don't have a helper. Meanwhile, the Bible says, when the helper who is the Holy Spirit shall come to you. And here you see, because you look at two men, because your father maybe is dead, your mother is dead, your uncles don't have it, your brothers don't have it, uh, uh, you have no school to any degree that will let you have a color job. My goodness, you are not the only person in that situation. Look to somebody and see. Some of you were worse than you, but God brought them out. So if God can do that, he can do that to your life. He's not a partial God. The only thing that differentiates one person to another is our walk with God. Most of us don't know. The way we call him differentiates one person from the other. The way we walk, the extent to which we decide, we choose to walk, we choose to walk with him. And I said, why we can't walk with him is because we have rejected the word of God. We don't want to go there. Even when we go and read it, what is saying that we choose, we make, pick, you know, what shoes are we picking? What doesn't suit us? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We don't even want to hear it. To the extent that sometimes when you preach what God has said in the word, because it doesn't suit some people, they say you are preaching them. Unfortunately, funnily enough. But the thing is in scripture, when you have mentioned the scripture, they say so you can see how hard the man's heart is. The man refuses to walk with God. The way we ought to walk with God. Anytime you reject the word of God, it will be difficult to walk with God. Because those are the ones you can't see God. The words are plain for you to see. And this is what so God is communicating to you through his word. And he, the one that you, you want to walk with, is saying this is the way things should be done. And then you want, you don't want, you want to go your own way. Then you are not ready to be, to be governed by him. You are not ready to walk with him. So James chapter 1, 20 to 25 says, Be you doers of the word and not hearers, so deceiving your own self. He said, if you are here and you don't do the word, he said, you are deceiving yourself. He said, for if any one be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholds himself and go his way and straight away forget what manner of man he is. This is serious. That anyone that hears the word of God and does not want to comply with it or does not act on it. He said, like somebody, you looked at your face when you were polishing your face, you saw that you have put uh, some eyebrow and put some lipstick, some lipo lipo as a lady. And put some pawns to cause your face to glow. And you wear the dress, you look at it, and so some boldness have come into you. And maybe the man you are barbed, your hair shaped in such a way, you look at it the way some men like cutting here, cutting there. We don't have it, so we can't barber. <laughs> All we do is just scrub it. But I used to have hair like this. I used to have hair like this. That they used to call me Tamil, they call me Tamil Mark Jackson. Plenty hair. So when I see some of the old ladies in town who knew me when they were younger, they used to come to this country, they see me. Oi, and they say, Oi, what's that corner? Oi. Is that my bani? Where is the hair? Bible says, when you looked at the mirror and you were able to comprehend the way you look like, and then when you turn back, you forget that you had lipo lipo on your lips. You forget that you had this impulse on your face. You forget that your hair was braided in this style. And that which gave you confidence there. Now when you go up because you forgot about it, the confidence is taken away. And you see another person, you say, oh, oh, this one is beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, you acknowledge that you are beautiful. The same way when you go to the word of God, especially in the this New Testament, the dispensation of grace, the Bible talks about who we are in Christ, what we can do, what has been given to us in Christ. So when we are walking in life journey, all the picture we have is, look, we have been brought into the fraternity of Godhead. We have been brought into a place where the glory of God is upon our life, where we are empowered to overcome challenges. Where we are empowered to be able to do what we want, we desire in life. Where we are empowered to succeed. Where we are empowered to progress. Where we are brought to a place that stagnation doesn't hold us. Not even the fires of life can consume us. Not even the waters of life can overwhelm us. That's what the Bible is saying. 
That though you walk through the fires, it will not consume you. Through the waters, it will not what? Overwhelm you. We see that. But when the challenges come, what do you do? What do we do? So the Bible says, if you become only a hearer of the word, and you don't act upon the word when the, the time comes, he said, then you are like someone who has looking his face into a mirror. When you go, you forget the way you look. You forget that you had lipo lipo. You forget that you had pons. You forget that your braided hair was beautiful. You forget that you had pointed nose or whatever nose you had. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, but whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty, I like the way Bible as, uh, the word of God ascribes to, I mean, Bible ascribes to the word of God. He calls it the perfect law of liberty. Perfect, perfect. He used the word perfect law of liberty. It's the perfect law that brings liberation. It liberates us. It liberates us. So that's why the book of Romans says that, it says, we have been what? Separated from every form of mortal liability. Say the word of God set you apart. We are separated and exempted. So if you look in the perfect law, the law of liberty, and continue there, he be not forgetful here by a doer of the work. He said, This man shall be blessed in his deed. You shall bless, be blessed in whatever. That's what Bible says that every work of a hand shall be blessed. What's what you lay your hands to do shall be blessed. You see that? It shall be blessed. So why are we not being blessed in the work of a hand? It's all because we have chosen not to work with him. That's a simple. Sometimes you don't need to go far. Why is the things not working? Because you have chosen not to go to him. Because he's the one that will direct you. He gives you an inspiration. He, he turns things around. He makes you understand certain things in life. And directs you as to the things to do. So you do to come out of the situation. Or to go over the situation. And you don't want to work with him. Then obviously if you don't want to work with him. Then the devil will work with you. Because the devil, he, you don't even invite him. He comes. Bible says he's walking to and fro. To seeking whom he may devour. So if you decide not to walk with God, one time I came to understand this. When I came to know the Lord, and I was so serious, and my life was up and down, I got to understand that the devil is moving. So if you choose not to walk with God, then the devil, he is ever ready to walk with you. The devil is ever ready. He is ever ready. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Doers of the word and not hearers are those that have good fellowship with the Lord and get blessed in all their deeds. Do you want to have a closer walk with God? Then do not hesitate to seek him earnestly through his word because that is where you can locate him. It's in the word of God that God can be located. It's in the word of God that we can be set apart and beautified. The Bible says, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. So it tells you what God has done for you. So we get set apart and beautified. And finally, it's through the word of God that we get to know that our life is meant for a life of glory. Yes. We need to walk with the Lord through his way. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to walk with the Lord. I need to. You need to. It's beautiful to behold the Lord and his acts when you chose to walk. It's so beautiful. Oh. So beautiful. So beautiful. Just some years back, I just decided just like, uh, what's the name? Joshua. When God handed the baton of Moses to him, he said, choose this day whom you serve. He told the nation of Israel. He said, look, make a choice this day whom you serve. But as for me, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He said, choose those that you want to work with. Now, as for me and mine. So he said, if all the nation of Israel would turn their back to the Lord, that's what he was implying. He said, as for him and his house, they will not turn their back because they have beheld the glory of God. Who was Joshua to speak to the sun, to stand still? And for one hour, the sun stood still. Joshua was not called. That's why I'm saying that, look, it doesn't take you to be any special person for God to communicate with you or for God to hear you. You thought Joshua just said it. He had an intuition in his spirit that the way the war was going, if you don't say something to cause the day to stay for an hour, when it gets to that, because this is the, the area, the area there, the people know the terrain. They will kill you. They will beat you people. 
So, speak. And he spoke. He said, let us start. Not even Moses went into that realm. No one, no prophet went to the realm that Joshua went. Joshua was not a prophet. He was, Bible calls him a minister to Moses. Not even a minister of God. A minister, a servant to Moses. He was serving Moses. He spoke when that war there came. What came into him? He has seen how that his master Moses was working with the Lord and all things were working together for Moses. Bible says the Lord made his ways known unto Moses. But to the end of Israel, they are asked. And if it was all the acts of God you are following, brothers and sisters, you will always miss it. The acts would come and you go. It doesn't stay. But you see, when you follow his ways, anytime the acts go and they go away, you can also produce them again. There was one uh, inventor called, is it Harrison Ford? They asked him, that look, all these things why you are invented. One day, if a chance fire comes to consume them, what can you do? He said, all these things is in me. I will reproduce them. Look at the understanding he had. He didn't even talk about money. He said inside of him dwelt that wealth. And he produced it from there. He will do that again. Joshua was not a prophet. He was not a priest. But he learned from his master that working with the Lord has great benefits. And Bible says anytime they go into the presence of the Lord, he and then his master and maybe sometimes Aaron when Moses is coming out, Aaron will quickly follow and go and walk with Moses. Ah, before I stand here in the mouth, God will slay me. What came into Joshua? You read the Bible, go there. Every time Joshua stays, when Moses leaves, because Moses will come to listen to God and he will go and tell them, Joshua will stay. And God was watching him. That this young lad has a desire to want to walk with me like my servant Moses is doing. And at a point in time, God watches us every time. Our actions, our ways, our intents, our thoughts. When we are alone, he watches us. And he knows that, he knows whether you are actually willing to go walk with him or you are just doing any like a zagza. He knows it. And when God sees that in your heart, he is ever ready to come. Hallelujah. And hug you. Do you see the prodigal son? He said he would go to his father. Before even he got there, the father ran out. And Israel, at that stage, a man of that caliber doesn't tend to run. Why? Because their garments were long. And you don't need to show your knees as in that caliber of a man. The man was rich. You don't need, and if you want to run, then you have to hold your garment, hold it like this, and raise it up and run. And it's shameful. But according to Jesus, that prodigal son's father, took away that. He forgot about that because of his love for him, the boy. So he ran, showing his nakedness on the leg and met him. And before the boy could speak, he said, stop, 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 don't talk about it. He couldn't even confess his sin. You know, sometimes when we wrong God and we make up our mind to come up, he even forgives us before we will make the confession. You don't know that? He does. If we are intention, we find out we are remorseful in godly, godly sorrow, God does it before even you ask him, Lord, forgive us. He's a merciful God. We need to learn to walk with him. We need to learn to walk with him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shall we sing this song together as we stand? Your word is settled. It is settled. Forever move forever. Oh Lord, thy word is said to it. Someone lift up your hand before the Lord. Let's thank God. Lift up your hand before him. May he who has begun this awesome and amazing work in our lives and given his first begotten as a ransom for our sins. May his grace be sufficient throughout these days. May his power be unveiled. May his glory be seen. May the excellency of his spirit prevail. In the name of Jesus.